Hey there, this is Alchemist Camp, where we learn Elixir by building things. And today we're going to build native executable applications. And this is a perfect opportunity to go back and revisit the word counter we made way back in Lesson 2 and Challenge 2. You may recall it was a simple EXS file, just a script that no module even, just execute line by line and do its thing. And there were some limitations like we couldn't pass in a file name to the script instead it had to ask the user what file name they wanted and now that we know mix we can do better than that so let's do it first thing we're going to do is mix a new application and we're still going to call it word count and we've got our word count with the familiar lib and test and all that we we've had before now we're going to go into the mix file and tell it we're going to use eScript, which is what makes the scripts for us. Main module is where the entry point is. We're going to call that word count dot CLI. Save that. Then we need to make the file. So go to lib, make a new directory called word count. Then inside of there, we're going to make a new file and we'll call that cli.ex new module and this is a submodule of word count so it's called word count dot cli and it's okay to make that all capitals and this needs to have a main function so we'll call it main since we have to and it takes in args then we're going to use something called an option parser that takes in a whole bunch of arguments and it returns parsed args and that's basically the flags uh, args which is going to be our file name and then invalid which is just going to be any errors we come across option parser dot parse we're going to start a new line because this is actually a pretty uh, pretty big set of things we got to give it give it the args which is the file name give it switches which is how we're defining what flags the users can put on it and the flags are going to be um, cares, like they type uh, word count dash dash cares. It'll say how many characters are in the file. Uh, then we have to specify the type. This is nil because the user is not saying how many characters. All we need is them to supply the flag and then we tell them how many characters there are. And the same for lines and the same for words. And finally, aliases. This will let them type a single character after a single dash. Like instead of dash dash cares, they could type dash C, and that would mean cares. Lines and W for words. Then let's make, so we can just put the closing paren here. And then let's make uh, just some output so we can make sure we're on the right path. So we'll just do io.inspect the whole tuple that we get back. We'll save that. Now we're going to compile. What's going on here? I do not want you, taskbar, go away. There we go. Or was I? Oh yes, then we need to cd into the directory and we run mix eScript.build to make the command line executable. Parsed is unused, that's fine. CLI equals equals undefined function words. It has to be an atom. Undefined function aliases. Oh, we need to make this the same thing that we received parsed args and uh, and invalid okay it's compiled it and it's important to note that you can't actually run this directly in windows we'd have to wrap it with a bat file so word count it doesn't know what program to open it with uh, we can use 
eScript on word count. And there we go. And we see the triple empty word lists. And if you use bash, which I could have done from right here in the integrated terminal, then you don't have to bother with that. So even Windows bash, no problem. The, the whole issue is the file name ending. So word count doesn't have a file name ending. Windows is confused. If we named it word count.bat, it would probably work. Uh, actually, no, it wouldn't. We'd have to name it some extension and associate that with eScript. So let's open git bash. And we will go to prog slash alchemist camp slash word count. And we have a word count file. And there we go. And let's pass it some flags. So that came out in the invalid because we're not allowed to have a dash F flag. But we can have a dash W flag. You see that does the same thing as a dash dash words flag. And you can even mix them like dash dash words dash L. And that gets words and lines. Okay. We'll get out of bash here, uh, especially since uh, I've got such a small font, it's probably hard for you to read. And we'll go back to working out of PowerShell. All right, so eScript word count dash, uh, we'll give it a file name. So say uh, readme.md dash, da dash dash lines. And here we go, we got the file name, we got lines true. That's looking pretty good. So now that we know we're parsing the options and handling that part well, let's just pass all of this to the main word count function. So word count dot start, we'll call it, and we'll just pass it parsed args and invalid. Now we'll go to our word count function, get rid of the default stuff and make Start function start and it takes in parsed. That's fine, we'll call it args and invalid. And let's just pull in everything from our word counter and we'll just go through it bit by bit and convert it to the new type word count.ex. Put it after the end. All right. So first thing is dealing with file name. We've pretty much already got that. Big thing we want to make sure of is that it's not invalid, and or that nothing invalid was passed, and that the file name is not h because if it's h, we'll give them help. So we'll say if invalid. is anything other than an empty array or the file is equal to h and actually let's just call this file instead of args since we know what we're getting here do show help and otherwise yeah we'll make this an else Otherwise, we will read the file and do all the other things. And we don't need to pass invalid because we know there are no invalid args at this point. Okay, so we can get rid of this part. We, we want to, okay, so we need to make this into a help function. We'll just, actually, we'll just call it exactly that. Uh, show show help and it doesn't need to take anything in and we'll just IO put all of that. So that and actually we need to we also need to bring the whole thing into our main file. And I'm holding Alt to do all this moving around. If you don't remember, recall from the earlier, earlier videos. All right, so we've got a show help function. That's good. 
then the else this is going to be the read file you know I think we'll just deal with an end at the very end so this will be a read file and it takes parsed and the file name and now we need to get the flags out of the parsed just like we did back here so we don't need we don't need that finally we've already got all right so flags equals case and this parsed is coming out as a list of keywords so or a list of key value pairs list of tuples so I'm going to do enum dot count parsed and if the count is zero then we should have a words flag and if the count is anything but zero then we'll map over we'll map over that list and for each one they're tuples so we can use the elum function to get the the zeroth item or the zero i.e the first item and we'll do that on each element get the zeroth item and end okay let's inspect flags just to make sure we're still on the right path we'll do this flags okay and then we got to comment all this other stuff that's not going to run and we'll try to remix oh, looks like a comma is missing save it and go again all right let's execute it with the same stuff we passed a little bit ago still got lines okay that looks good what if we don't pa pass it anything it says words and if we pass it a dash w it says words okay how about wcl excellent all right so we'll continue through so we've already we've already got the flags and we've already dealt with that and I'm just going to uncomment this so it's a little easier to read. The body will read file name. We want exactly that. Words, okay, all that logic stays the same. So we'll just move it right into our function like so. And then the flags also stays almost the same, but not quite because now they're atoms instead of, instead of strings. So be lines and words and cares line that up save it and run again excellent are we actually reading in the file though oh it didn't remix it remix it and there we go. And let's just run it on this file itself. So in lib slash word count dot ex. 49 lines. That looks about right. All right, let's get rid of a couple of white spaces. This pretty much wraps up the lesson. So as you can see, we've made a more powerful and more useful command line utility and it runs uh, directly natively if you're using bash if you're using windows we still got to use eScript just because there's no file extension and we don't know what to do with it but we could wrap it in a in a bat file uh, that wouldn't be too much more work and as usual i've got a challenge for you this time the challenge is to make your version of the unix command tail if you're not familiar with it tail prints out the last 10 lines of a file and it has a whole bunch of options but just try replicating one which is if you type dash dash lines 
or if you type a single dash into n, it will print out the number of lines that you specified. So if you type tail 30-n, it prints out the last 30 lines of the file instead of the last 10 lines of the file like normal. Until next lesson, code on.